everyone. Welcome to the Zia Cooking Kitchen. My name is Carrie, and we are going to have a great time today. Guess what? We're making salsa. Everybody always asks me, Carrie, how do you make such good salsa? And let me tell you what, I know how to make over a hundred different types of salsa. Watch, I'm gonna start dropping two different types of salsa recipes every month, and by the end of the year, you'll already have 24 in your bag. Let's go ahead and get started. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already because I want you to be part of the Zia cooking family. Let's get started. Today, I'm gonna to be creating two delicious salsas. I'm gonna make a traditional restaurant or cantina style salsa that you'll find. And also sometimes it's referred to as a ranchero, uh, ranchera salsa. And that is something you can use for chips and salsa. You can use it for tacos. You can put it on your eggs in the morning and your hash browns. And the other delicious salsa I'm gonna be creating is a salsa verde. And that is a green salsa. And that is gonna be incorporating everything green. And let's get started and let's get moving. When we are making salsas, remember, this is the most customizable recipe I know how to make. In fact, this is one of the first things I do is I start my babes making salsa and I start with simple ingredients like onion and tomato. What? Is that a salsa? You bet you because salsa means sauce. That's what salsa stands uh, means in Spanish. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. Today I'm going to talk first about getting our vegetables and how we can do them. You can, you can roast them, you can boil them, you can pan fry them, you can put them in the oven under the broiler, you can put your vegetables on a grill. That's the wonderful thing about salsa is what flavor are you imparting. So when you cook your onion and your garlic, remember it's going to reduce the pungency so it's not going to be so uh, bright and bitter um, or strong on your tongue. Now we also have salsas that require no cooking like pico de gallo and I'm gonna be sharing that recipe with you guys real soon. But for the salsa that we're doing today, I'm gonna do a roasting and I'm using my cast iron and I simply put some foil on it and a little bit of oil and what I'm doing is, and a little bit of oil means about a tablespoon. And what I'm doing is I am uh, coated all my vegetables and I'm getting a nice little char on those. And the reason I like to do that is it softens the flavor. It really, really gives a good quality on that roasted part of the tomatoes. The next salsa, and I'm gonna be making two today, so I wanna get these cooking. We are going to be using as our main ingredient for our salsa verde, we are gonna be using a tomatillo. What is a tomatillo? Is that a green tomato? Actually, it's not. It's a completely different type of tomato. And it comes covered with a husk, and you simply peel it off. And when you peel these off and you find them in the grocery store, they're in all grocery stores. Sometimes people just don't know what to do with them because they're hard and they can have a bitter tartness to them. Also, when you peel the husk off, they're very sticky. So you wanna make sure once you peel them that you give them a good scrub. And then you can do a couple of different things. For me, what I like to do is I like to drop them in some hot um, boiling water. I add in my tomatillos. I'm adding in jalapenos and I'm adding in some serranos. Now let's talk a little bit about the peppers. Jalapenos sometimes can pack some heat, but more often I'm finding that they add a really nice smoky background flavor. But the little brother, the serrano, he can always be there to give a good punch in the mouth, if you know what I mean, because this is always something that is spicy and that is delicious. You can start by incorporating one. I know people, sometimes when I make them for the guys, I will put up to 15 or 20 serranos in a salsa. Believe it or not, they love it that way. But you get to decide your spice level. That's what makes salsa so beautiful. Another hip, hint and tip that I wanna tell you about is when you're using your peppers, if you slice them open, you can remove the um, seed pods and the vein from inside and that will also dull the heat down. But I want to remind you guys when you're working with peppers, especially for those of you who are working with serranos, uh, habaneros, um, if you're crazy and you get out there and you do some ghost peppers, you wanna make sure that you're very, very safe in your kitchen. Oh, I love the sound of that poppin' salsa. Wearing gloves is one way to protect yourself when you're working with hot peppers because when you're done, you simply just peel off the glove and throw it away. 
There is nothing worse than a pepper burn, especially if you touch any of the, um, your mouth, your nose, or your eye area. It can burn for hours. Some people say, oh, I know the best way to get the chili burn off is to wash your hands in olive oil and salt. Um, there's a Mexican tradition that if you run your hand through your hair, it takes away the chili burn off of your hands. I don't think I would want to do that because then probably my scalp would be on fire. But you know, there are so many different ways that people say, this is how to get the burn off of you. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use common sense logic. Carry wisdom. Just don't let it happen. Wear those gloves if you're gonna work with those spicy things. Um, it's just the easiest way to avoid any type of cross-contamination or membrane burns going on. All right, now that I've told you everything I could possibly tell you and warned you, let's be brave enough and let's get working with these peppers. So in um, the back part, we have our ranchero salsa going and we're putting a nice char on these. These vegetables can be purchased anywhere, your farmer's market. You can grow these in your backyard. You can pick them up at a grocery store. But this is a wonderful way to get your family to eat more vegetables. If I served my family two pounds of raw tomatoes, they would probably walk away from the table. But doing it like this, it's delicious. And salsas are something that people can be famous for. I know that one of my aunts in my family, we always ask her to bring the salsa because she makes it so well. These are ready to go. Let's get started and let's get moving. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do our ranchera salsa. These have a delicious char going on them. And this is how easy it gets. We are gonna simply just start adding those softened vegetables, skins and all. Some people like to take the core out, some people like to remove different parts. It's completely up to you. Remember, that's what makes salsa special is that you can customize it. Okay, so we've got that going in there. Two big peppers. Some habaneros. Don't let your garlic burn. Make sure you add that on last. If you mess up like I did here, and don't worry cooks, everybody makes little mistakes. If you cook your garlic too much and you get a brown or a black char on it, it's gonna impart a bitter quality. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna skip that, and we're gonna add that there directly to our blender. Now let's get moving on to the next one. I know your time is valuable and so is mine. Let's take a look at our green. And we are gonna cook our tomatillos. We've already peeled them, we wash them, and we put them in boiling water and they become a nice army green color. You can see um, compared to how they look, just a little bit of a different variation and that's exactly what you want. And you're gonna add those in directly to your blender. And I'm adding in the peppers. Again, you can customize it. I'm using the seeds, the membranes. I'm making this nice and hot and spicy. Whoa, we did that. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and blend these up. I'm gonna put them in a bowl and I'm gonna tell you how to finish these salsas. Now that I've got all this stuff in the blender and ready to go, let's keep on moving with these delicious salsas. One thing I didn't um, mention before is when I'm using my comal, which is a cast iron griddle, I like to put a piece of foil down to do my grilling. I do it for two reasons. Number one, it's easier to clean up. You can just fold it up and get rid of it. But secondary, um, there are acidic properties in tomatoes. You wanna be real careful when you're using them directly on your cast iron because it destroys the finish. So it's really important that when you're using them, especially if I'm creating like a marinara or something, I'm gonna use a Dutch oven with an enamel coating on top of my cast iron. But remember, these are lifetime tools and we wanna take care of them. Let me move this out of the way. Another tip I'm gonna share with you guys now is when you add things to your blender, these are very, very hot. So when you're putting things into your blender, two things that are very important. You wanna make sure that the top is connected very firmly. And I really encourage people to use a towel and keep the top down. The second uh, tip I wanna give you is when you drop all of your vegetables in to create your salsas, you start with pulsing like this and let your items get crushed before you go ahead and you run it and let them mix up. Oh, delicious. The same thing with our green one. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pulse it, mixing it all in. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now, um, one thing I wanna uh, remind everybody is because we're doing the green salsa, 
is right when I add it in there, I add in some cilantro. And I only use the seeds. And don't come for me. If you don't like salsa, don't come for me unless I call you. And I'm not calling you. I'm just telling you right now that I like to add some cilantro to the mix because this is a true verde. If you don't like it, take it out. If you want more jalapenos, add more in. Salsa is so customizable and it's made for you. But this is something that I love to do. It's a wonderful, wonderful taste for me, but like I said, if you don't like it, go ahead and skip it. Now we have these beautiful salsas blended. You wanna be, again, real careful when you're opening these up. Sometimes they can build up some steam. Yes! All oh, the smells are lovely. Everything is going really, really nice here in the Zia cooking kitchen. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna add this in there. That is a true delicious green salsa verde. Now how I make this one special is I take my avocado. I'm simply going to cut in some small squares. You can go ahead and scoop this out and do it another way if you'd like. But I like to go ahead and add in a few chunks of the avocado directly to my salsa verde. Oh guys. I just want to take a bath in this right now. For spices, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in a little bit of salt. And a little bit, we're going to start with a half a teaspoon. I've done this many, many times. Salt to your preference. Since we added in our onion, our garlic, it's very, very good for me right there. Um, but if you'd like to add in additional um, garlic salt or pepper, um, go for it. It's your game. All right, let's take a look at this one. And this... <sighs> So delicious. And go ahead and pour this one in there. And you can see how delicious this is. You can make it smooth or chunky as you'd like. I like to do a little restaurant quality there. And on this one, we're gonna go ahead and spice the same. We're gonna drop in some salt. On this one, I like to add a little bit of garlic powder. I'm a garlic freak, it's lovely. And my Mexican oregano. Since these are broad leaves, I like to crush them in my palm right before they go in there. I like the kick of a Mexican oregano in my salsa. If you don't like it, skip it. It's your kitchen, you do what you like. Thank you for coming around. This is so tasty. One thing I will recommend for those of you who have never made salsa in your house, go ahead and get started and start making them instead of buying the jars. You can always customize them. And again, I promise you a hundred different salsa recipes before you're done with me. One thing I want to share with you is when Honey and I are dancing and having our date nights, whenever that man wants to make me feel romantic, he leans over while we're dancing and he says, chips and salsa. It always gets me hot. I'm so glad you guys joined me in the Zia cooking kitchen. Let's go ahead and take some taste tests on this. Oh, I see this just lighting up some wonderful tacos. Mmm. I love the green too. Oh yeah. 